Yeah. There. Okay. Um, we're talking about Unit 15 in Hansen and Quinn, um, more specifically in this video, about um, the enclitic word tis and its non enclitic form tis. <laughs> it's the same word, and it's either got an accented form, in which case it's an interrogative, it asks a question. And without an accent, um, it is an indefinite adjective. So by an interrogative, we mean it means who, which, or what, with a question mark after it. Mm -hmm. And as an indefinite, it means some, someone, so, something, anyone, anything, plural. Okay? Um, so it, it can be, either of these can be adjectives or they can be nouns. In other words, you can say what what person are you, or what thing are you, or what, what, depending on what, what, what you do with it as a, an adjective. So before we talk about the forms of this word, I think it might be a good idea to talk a little bit about enclitics, because we, we need to understand how you can have the same word, have such different meanings, um, and still be uh, differentiated by the speakers and the hearers of the language. And in order to do that, we have to talk about this concept of an enclitic, which, remember, there are two kinds of words. I don't know if we talked about this recent enough memory for people to remember, but <laughs> probably not. But there are two kinds of unaccented words in Greek. There are proclitics. I might want to write this down. And enclitics. And a proclitic is a word like the prepositions s and n, um, for example, that we've had, um, and ek, um, they're proclitics. What happens is they, they become a, a syllable on the word that follows them, okay? So if you say es dein Polen to the city-state, which is actually the etymology of Istanbul, you know that? Es dein Polen comes from, anyhow, oh. it means to the city. It becomes one word, okay, with it. And that's why Istanbul means downtown. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so it becomes one word with the with the with the syllables that, that follow it, and it doesn't change anything to add um, add syllables to the beginning of a word. However, mm. an enclitic is a word that is a, a one or two syllable word that becomes a syllable on at, added on to the word that precedes it. And as you know, the Greek accent system is all. Um, teleological, it's directed at what's happening at the end of the word, okay, in an important way. So the rules feature that mm -hmm. as a key thing. That, and um, when you add syllables at the end, it messes up the accents of mm -hmm. words, okay? So here's the, 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 both the word tis with an accent and tis without are distinguished by the fact that the first one is, is a uh, not enclitic has an accent that's even an invarying acute. It's the only word in Greek that always has an acute on the first syllable. Okay, even if there's another word after it, that acute never becomes grave. Okay, so it's like an extreme example, mm -hmm. and um, which means that, it, and, and part of the reason for that is that it has to come. Um, it almost always comes. So it's not never. It's not never, but mm -hmm. but it almost always comes first in a sentence. Okay. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you think about a word like the unaccented tis, which is enclitic, it can't come first in a sentence because then it has no word for it to become a syllable of, okay? So so the unaccented tis is ruled out at the beginning of a sentence, whereas the accented one is ruled in and never loses its accent, okay? So so you in, in, in reality, there's not a single case where you can be... It, it's ambiguous as to which tis you're dealing with, as long as you've got an accent on it, you've got the accent rules in place. Okay, so the forms of these words, these are old words, they're Indo-European. They're related to our words, who and which, and stuff like that. In Latin, though you know Latin, it's the same as quis, qui, and quid. Um, the original form in Greek was qui, quis, 
and that's the as far back as we can reconstruct it. But the KW before sound before an I turned into a T, and we in some places and into a P in others. So for example, in the word for five, you have quinqua in Latin patente. Mm -hmm. That's after an E, but in, in, when it's before an I, it turns into a T. Okay. Anyway, those are fun rules. So, mm -hmm. so for example, que, which is an enclitic word for and in Latin, okay, um, becomes te. Oh, anyway, that seems about. to break the rule. <laughs> All right, anyhow, more about these things at some other point. Interesting. But, um, anyway, so let, let's go back to the forms of these words. They're identical in forms except for their accents. Okay, so let's put down their, since they're adjectives, okay, they're, they're pronouns, okay, and adjectives, um, they have one, one set of forms that's both masculine and feminine. These are really old words. That could predate the split between masculine and feminine, and one set of forms that's neuter, okay? So the masculine, and, 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 and they're not simple either, there are alternative forms because, there are, you know, lots of things going on here. So the, the interrogative one, which always has an accent on the I, in the masculine and feminine form, it's dis, tinos, tinos, tine, and tina, no, the, oh, okay. the accent goes on okay. the I. Okay, I'm thinking of the enclitic. Yep, exactly. And tina, okay. okay, and then in the plural, you can put it. Uh, well, let's do the neuter. Okay, mm -hmm. there's t with an accent, tinos, tine, and t. Okay. Um, for the genitive and the dative, there's a alternative form, which is the result of some combining with other words, which is to, the, like the genitive singular of the definite article. In fact, it's identical in form. And to, okay, yep, for both the, the, the masculine and feminine and the neuter, they're identical. So how do you tell whether that's an article or whether that's the pronoun? Okay. Well, for one thing, if it's the if it's the interrogative pronoun, it's going to be sounds going to have a question mark. Okay. And the other thing is that you usually don't use that form if you don't have a noun after it. In other words, you won't say to uh, uh, anthropu at the beginning of sentence to mean of which human being. You know, the Greeks tend to avoid that, so that, that you use it only when it means of who, of whom, or to whom. Uh, generally speaking, so but that's that's important to disambiguate. Um, it can be confusing at first. Should we look at the plural of these words? So so if you look at it for a second, you can see that the root is t i n, okay, um, in Greek anyway, and then tis uh, um, and t. I have I'm missing the final. It, it, there, there's no end in those forms. The no, it's really the n is a noun suffix. Okay, there was no n there originally, so you're making you're in making those forms with an n noun suffix form. Okay, um, and there isn't any n in the in the nominatives, uh, nominative singular masculine or in the nominative and accusative singular neuter, but all the other forms have that n. Okay, so the inherited form. Uh, word never had an end. This mm -hmm. is Greek nominalizing it, so to speak. The the uh, plural forms. We make a list of them. Okay, we want you to do the masculine and feminine first, and then we'll. we'll so it's tines. So we're talking about third generation. Tinon. Okay. And accent always on the first iota. Mm -hmm. Tisi. Okay. It's not a new movable. Yes, it can have a new one. And um, that's from tense, right? Um, and, but I have, and tinos. Tinos again. Tinos with an oh, S. Oh, tinos, yes. With an AS, yep. And then the neuter, plural. We've got tina, which looks is the same form as the accusative singular masculine and feminine. So I have to be careful about that. Mm -hmm. And then tinon, tisi, and tina. And 
So it's a pretty it's a pretty standard standard third declension form, and um, and the other form rather than listing it all out, the 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 indefinite form, which has no accent of its own, okay, the book puts in accents uh, in weird places when it when it lists it because uh, conventionally it does things like that. So you tend to list them with an accent on the second syllable, okay, to differentiate it from this tis, which does not have one. So there's tis, and then it gives you an accent on when it's two syllable, it puts an accent on the last syllable, okay? Mm -hmm. So it goes tis, tenos, tene. Um, Tena and then tenes, tenon, tese, and tenas, okay, in the enclitic form. But those accents are not really there. Okay, they're just a convention for listing them. Um, uh, so, so the forms are really identical. The only thing that varies is the accent. And what we are going to do at a certain point in this lesson is to give you a sheet or teach you how to deal with accentlessness of <laughs> the indefinite form. So to repeat this word, the indefinite form means in the singular, some uh, as an adjective, someone as a pronoun, um, any or anyone, okay, and in the neuter, something um, or anything, okay, or any things, okay, or some things. So it's all those things, the adjectival and the pronominal forms, all right? All right. Um, I, I, I recommend that you not read the, the discussion in the book about how to accent in clinics. It will make you crazy. Um, but if you want to, be my guest. All right. Um, now we want to talk about something else, a word that it's amazing that we have.